good morning students in the today's lecture we are going to discuss the life cycle of the aspergillus okay in the last lecture we have discussed the life cycle of the mucor and today's topic for the discussion is the life cycle of the aspergillus okay the first of all the systematic position or the classification of the aspergillus here the classification of the aspergillus which is proposed by the alexo paulus and the memes in the 1979 as per our syllabus we are here uh, following the classification of the fungi which was proposed by the alexo paulus and the memes in the 1979 here the kingdom is the mycetae division o mastigomycota subdivision ascomycotina class ascomycetes order aspergillales family aspergillaceae and the genus is the aspergillus okay the aspergillus it is placed in the kingdom mycetae division a mastigomycota subdivision ascomycotina class ascomycetes order aspergillales family aspergillaceae genus aspergillus okay in some of the book you can find that the aspergillus it is also referred as the eurotium because the different names are given to that particular fungi that is to the perfect stage that is the sexual reproduction and the imperfect stage that is the uh, the only the asexual reproduction that is that means the sum of the species of the aspergillus these are produced only by the asexual reproduction while some species of the aspergillus these are produced by the sexual reproduction okay that is the perfect stage here the aspergillus this is the um, name it is uh, given to the asexual species of the uh, aspergillus that means which are produced only by the asexual reproduction okay that is these are the imperfect fungi and these are referred as the aspergillus and while the perfect stage perfect stage that is the sexual reproduction in these species it is referred as the eurotium okay that's why do not get confused between the aspergillus and the eurotium aspergillus that is this is the name of the fungi which are imperfect that means these are only produced by the asexual reproduction and the name eurotium it is given to the perfect stage of the aspergillus perfect stage that is the sexual reproduction of the aspergillus okay that is about the classification of the aspergillus which was proposed by the alexo paulus and the memes in the 1979 here the first of all the habit and the habitat of the aspergillus here the aspergillus it is represented by about 132 species okay and which are widely distributed that is these are occurring over the wide range of the habitats and of these 132 species only 30 species these are reported from the india the majority of the species of the aspergillus that is these are saprophytic saprophytic these are growing on the decomposing organic materials that is these are the fruits vegetables then pickles jams jellies and the other food stuffs like the cheese okay then also the these species these are growing on the wood leather and even on the paper okay then very few species that is these are parasitic and these are responsible for the diseases in the plants animals and also in the human being okay that is some of the species of the aspergillus these are found parasites on the plants and these are crossing the crown rot of the groundnut and the ball rot of the cotton okay these are causing crown rot of the groundnut and the ball rot of the cotton then some of the species like the aspergillus niger then aspergillus fumigatus aspergillus flavus that is these are the species which are responsible for the aspergillosis in the animals and in the human being okay these are responsible for the disease named as the aspergillosis in the animals and in the human being 
then the aspergillus niger that is the species which is growing on the food stuffs and it contaminates the food stuffs okay that is whenever it is growing on the food stuff it will uh, produces the certain type of the toxic substances and these toxic substances these are referred as the aflatoxins and these aflatoxins are carcinogenic in nature carcinogenic in nature means that is these are responsible for the cancer okay aspergillus niger it contaminates the food stuffs that is it will grow on the different food stuffs then it will secrete the toxic substances these toxic substances secreted by the fungi these are said to be the aflatoxins and the aflatoxins these are carcinogenic in nature that means these are responsible for the cancer okay then there are certain species which are common air contaminants okay then the though that is the there are species that is which are responsible for the certain type of the diseases in the plants then in the animals and in the human being there are several species of the aspergillus which are very useful there is several species these are used in the various industries that especially these are used in the production of the organic acids then enzymes then fats vitamins and the different types of the antibiotics okay though the aspergillus some of the species these are harmful but the several species of the aspergillus these are very useful these are used in the various industries and especially for the production of the organic acids enzymes fats vitamins and the antibiotics okay there is one species aspergillus niger that is it is used in the study of the many biological processes and it can detect even very minute quantities of the trace elements like the zinc then uh, manganese molybdenum in an unknown sample okay aspergillus niger it is used in the study of the many biological processes and this uh, species this particular species of the aspergillus can detect uh, even very minute quantity of the trace elements like the zinc then uh, uh, manganese molybdenum in an unknown sample okay then the, the species like the aspergillus fumigatus it uh, possesses the antifungal properties okay aspergillus fumigatus it possesses the antifungal properties okay that is all about the habit and the habitat of the aspergillus then we are moving to discuss about the vegetative structure in of the um, aspergillus here the mycelium the mycelium the plant body of the fungi it is referred as the mycelium and here the mycelium of the aspergillus it is where developed it is profusely branched then it is septed in this photograph you can see there is the large number of the nuclei are scattered and here there is a presence of the partition wall or we can say there is a presence of the septa and that's why here we can say that the mycelium it is well developed it is profusely branched and septed and it consists of inter ohan mass of the hyphae okay it is a single hyphae large number of the such hyphae come together and then there will be the formation of the mycelium of the aspergillus okay here the mycelium is well developed it is profusely branched it is septed it consists of inter ohan mass of the hyphae here you can see the cells of the hyphae that is these are multinucleate okay that is this is the partition wall which is present and in this one in this compartment here you can see the large number of the nuclei these are scattered and that's why here we are saying that the cells of the hyphae that is these are multinucleate okay and then the mostly these uh, hyphae that is these are having only one type of the nuclei then in that case it will be said as the hyphae it is homokaryotic but in some of the species the hyphae that is uh, it may be having the two different type of the nuclei and that is the it is generally formed this type of hyphae it is generally formed due to the fusion of the two hyphae having the opposite strain 
and such hyphae it is said to be the heterokaryotic okay the cells of the hyphae these are multinucleate most of the species in most most of the species the cells of the hyphae that is these are homokaryotic that means the only one type of the nuclei these are present but sometimes the uh, hyphae of the opposite strain hyphae of the opposite strain that is get fused with each other and then the such hyphae it, the cells of such hyphae it will have the two different types of the nuclei and in such cases the hyphae the cells of the hyphae these are heterokaryotic then in the hyphae there is a presence of the characteristic pigments and along with these characteristic pigments there is a presence of the cell organelles like the mitochondria endoplasmic reticulum and the ribosomes okay then here the reserved food material the food material it is reserved here you can see the food material it is reserved in the form of the oil globules then in the septa or in the partition wall there is a presence of the simple pores at the center region of each septum and generally that is uh, these uh, simple pores that is uh, these uh, permits the flow of cytoplasmic contents between the adjacent cells okay that means the these two cells that is they remain in contact with each other or there is a cytoplasmic connection uh, due to the presence of a small pore which is present in the center of this transverse septum okay that is about the uh, um, uh, structure of the uh, vegetative structure of the uh, aspergillus okay that is about the vegetative structure of the aspergillus then here the reproduction of the aspergillus the aspergillus it three methods the first one is the vegetative reproduction the second one it is the asexual reproduction and the third one it is the um, it is the sexual reproduction okay the aspergillus it reproduces by the vegetative reproduction then asexual reproduction and the sexual reproduction here the first of all the vegetative reproduction vegetative reproduction in the um, aspergillus it takes place by the following method that is by the fragmentation okay the vegetative reproduction in the aspergillus it takes place by the fragmentation how the fragmentation takes place in the aspergillus the vegetative mycelium it breaks up into the small pieces small pieces or we can say that is the fragments and each of the small piece or the fragment it grows independently into the new thallus under the favorable conditions okay the vegetative reproduction in the aspergillus it takes place by the fragmentation the vegetative mycelium it breaks up into the small pieces or the fragments and each of the small piece or the fragment it having the capacity to grow independently into the new thallus under the favorable condition okay that is how the vegetative reproduction in the aspergillus takes place by the fragmentation okay then the second method of reproduction in the um, aspergillus and that is the uh, uh, that is the asexual reproduction okay here the asexual reproduction in the aspergillus it takes place by the formation of the conidia okay here you can see that is the conidia these are developed it takes place in in the aspergillus asexual reproduction it takes place by the formation of the conidia and these are produced on the characteristic stalk like structures and these characteristic stalk like structures are called as the conidio four okay a sexual reproduction in the aspergillus it takes place by the conidia and these conidia these are produced on the characteristic stalk like structure and this characteristic stalk like structure here you can see that is called as the conidio four okay here you can see that is how exactly the conidio four it is developed and then the conidia these are developed on the conidio Force. here you can see this is the single uh, simple hyphae of the um, aspergillus and here the some of the cells of the somatic hyphae they grow 
more rapidly and develop uh, and develop the rigid wall okay some of the somatic hyphae they grow more rapidly here you can see this is the single uh, somatic hyphae and it grows more rapidly it will uh, develop a rigid wall and these cells are known as the foot cells okay these cells are known as the foot cell and erect branch which is known as the conidiopore it is arised from the each foot cell okay from each of the foot cell there arises a single um, a single erect branch and that erect branch here you can see from the foot cell a erect branch it is arised and that erect branch it is known to be the conidiophore okay then the conidiophore it is usually unbranched and aseptic okay in the aspergillus here you can see the conidiophore it is aseptic that means that uh, there is a complete absence of the transverse septa or the partition walls in the conidiophores okay it is aseptic and it is unbranched okay the conidiophores in the aspergillus these are aseptic these are unbranched these are not branched the tip of the conidiophore swells considerably okay here you can see that is the tip of the conidiophore okay the tip of the conidiophore it swells considerably due to the accumulation of the abundant cytoplasm and then it will develop a young vesicle okay due to the accumulation of the abundant cytoplasm in the tip region of the conidiophore the tip region of the conidiophore it get swelled and that particular swelling it is referred as the young vesicle okay it is referred as the young vesicle the shape of the vesicle it varies in the different species of the aspergillus okay the the shape of the vesicle it varies in the different species of the aspergillus in some of the species it may be globo shaped it may be hemispherical or it may be elongated or club shaped okay then from this vesicle here you can see from this vesicle the several finger shaped projections these are developed okay from this vesicle from the surface of the vesicle there arises the several finger shaped structures okay in this one here you can see this is the young vesicle and from this young vesicle here you can see these are the large number of the finger shaped structures or the outgrowths these are arised okay and these are known as the sterigmata okay here you can see sterigmata s t e r i g m a t a in some of the book you can find these finger shaped structures which are arised on the young vesicles these are also referred as the phyalids p h i a l i d e s okay on the surface of the vesicle there arise the large number of the finger shaped structures these finger shaped structures these are known to be the sterigmata or these are called as phyalids okay there may be up to three layers of the sterigmata on the vesicle okay there may be up to the three layers of the sterigmata on the vesicle okay here you can see the two layers of the sterigmata here one that is the first layer of the sterigmata and here you can see the second layer of the sterigmata okay and on the second layer of the sterigmata then these conidia are okay that's why the first layer of the sterigmata here you can see it is said to be the primary sterigmata then here, this second layer of the sterigmata it is referred as the secondary sterigmata and if the another layer it is present if the third layer of the sterigmata is present then this uh, this layer it will be called as the tertiary sterigmata but here in this photograph you can see only the two layers of the sterigmata are present okay during the formation of the sterigmata many thin areas these are developed in the vesicle wall due to the dissolution of the wall material okay here you can see 
that is then in the vesicle there is a portion of the many thin areas during the development of the pterygmata okay the vesicle cytoplasm it is then pushed in this area synchronously and thus the finger like outgrowths are formed okay the vesicle cytoplasm is then pushed in these areas and synchronously thus the finger shaped outgrowths are formed okay that is how the vesicle developed and on the vesicle the two one two three layers of the sterigmata are developed okay then how exactly the conidia are produced on these sterigmata okay here in this photograph you can see how exactly the uh, conidia these are developed on the sterigmata or the fia leaves okay here you can see this is the simple fia lead okay these are conidia these are developed in the long basi petal chains on the sterigmata okay these are here you can see in this photograph that is these are produced in the basi petal chain basi petal chain means the younger conidia it is present above the sterigmata while the older one it is present at the tip region of the chain okay that means the younger one it is present near the sterigmata and the older one it is present at the tip region of the chain of conidia okay that is why we are seeing here that is the conidia these are produced in the basi petal succession okay there are about 10 to 12 conidia these are produced in a single chain okay there are about 10 to 12 conidia which are produced in each chain during the formation of the conidium the nucleus of sterigmata divides here you can see here it is the young fia lead here it is a presence of only one nucleus then what happened that particular particular nucleus it get divided and it will produce the daughter nuclei that's why this young fia lead now it is having the two nuclei then what happens a globular protuberance it will appear on the sterigmata or the fia lead okay synchronously a globular protuberance it is developed at the tip of the sterigmata and it expands to form the conidium okay that particular protuberance it will then it will then get further developed into the conidium here you can see that uh, uh, some nuclei which is uh, uh, formed after the division that nuclei along with the some amount of cytoplasm it will move into that protuberance okay one of the two daughter nuclei present in the sterigmata it passes into the conidium and as the conidium expands the wall of the sterigmata ruptures near its tips okay here you can see that is the broken fia, fia, fia lid wall okay as it expands the wall of the the wall of the sterigmata ruptures near its tips the remnants of the broken wall persist as a cap formed conidium okay here you can see that is the broken wall it is functioning as a cap to the first formed conidium it is first formed conidium and this is the broken fialid wall which is acting as a cap okay then what happens the remaining nucleus in the steric matter it continues to divide in the same manner during the formation of the successive conidia okay now the nuclei which is present in the steric matter it will again divide it will again produce the daughter nuclei okay then again a small protuberance will be developed that particular nuclei it will again get moved into that protuberance and that is how the second conidium is developed okay and just like that that is the large number of the conidia that is about 10 to 12 conidia these are developed in the basi petal succession okay that is that is how the long chain of conidia it is formed in this fashion okay in the early stages the cytoplasm of the two successive conidia remains continue due to the presence of the cylindrical structure that is called as the isthmus 
okay here you can see the isthmus and through this isthmus the cytoplasm of these are two conidia it is it remains in um, connection with each other okay here in the early stages this is the early stages in which the uh, cytoplasm of the two successive conidia it uh, remains continuous due to the presence of the isthmus i s t h m u s okay but later on due to the formation of an inner conidial wall layer the cytoplasm of the two successive conidia becomes separated okay here you can see this is the early stage in which the um, cytoplasm of these conidia it is in connection with each other due to the presence of the isthmus but in the latter stages what happens that is these conidia they will develop their own wall and thus they will be become independent okay that is these the cytoplasmic connection these will get separated the isthmus which remains in between the conidia now it is called as the connective okay the isthmus in this one now it is called as the connective the uh, it is called as the connective the conidium here you can see this is the structure of the conidia the conidium here it is the small globose it is a uninucleate structure okay it is conidium it is said to be the small globose and uninucleate structure and it contains the various pigments such as yellow green brown or the black in the different species okay the conidia which are present um, on these conidiophore that is these are small here you can see the structure of the conidium these are small these are globose and these are uninucleate structure it consists of various pigments such as yellow green brown or black in the different species these conidia these are dispersed by the wind okay these conidia these are dispersed by the wind and whenever they get the suitable substratum and favorable environmental condition they will germinate that just like by germination it will give rise to the germ tube and then these conidia then produces the new mycelium of the aspergillus okay that is how the asexual reproduction in the aspergillum takes place okay that is how the asexual reproduction in the aspergillus takes place